Halloween is fun, but it can also be stressful. Children with ASD can get a sensory overload with all of the heightened excitement during the holiday, especially during this pandemic. So joining us to tell us more is certified autism specialist with Easter Seals, Jennifer Westerheist. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Jennifer, let's first talk about why this, uh, why Halloween can be so stressful for those who are on the, on the spectrum. Sure. So I'm an occupational therapist and I work with many children with autism here at Easter Seals. But one of the big um, pieces for autism sometimes could be sensory processing differences. So when we think about holidays, there can be a lot of different sensations and things that are a little bit different than day to day. So different sights, different smells, decorations, costumes. Um, so a lot of differences. So one of those pieces, too, can be um, kind of preparing our children with autism to know that some of those differences are coming and to be able to handle them a little bit better and get through that holiday with their families and have fun. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what parents should be doing to kind of help and ease that, uh, make the e evening a little bit e uh, more, I guess, easy for those kids? Sure. So preparation is a big piece. Um, a lot of kids with autism like to kind of know things ahead of time, know what to expect, maybe know like rules and expectations around social situations, which holidays have a lot of those different rules than our day to day. So doing things like reading stories or talking about what Halloween means, what they might do, making a plan. Um, they could practice wearing their costume ahead of time, like wearing it around the house for a week or two before just to get the feel of it and to be comfortable or to identify any um, like alternates they might want. So maybe packing along some extra clothes or a change if they decide that their uh, costume is a little uncomfortable or overwhelming while they're trick-or-treating. Um, something else parents can do too is really prep their child on how they might do trick-or-treating. So not every child with autism uses verbal communication. They might use signs or picture exchanges. They may use different phrases than trick-or-treat like candy please or I want candy. Um, so practicing those things and having conversations with children about what they're um, open to disclosing if they want to say they have autism or have a sign or have a card to show um, or if they just want to kind of practice and see how things go the night out too. Is there anything that those who are actually handing out the ca uh, candy can do to kind of help in the cause? So at EasterSeals.com slash Michigan, we actually have a lot of Halloween resources right now um, for families. One of them is a sign that says this is an autism friendly house. If people who are passing out candy want to post that so families with children with autism maybe feel comfortable going up to those homes. Um, but another tip for families too, it could be just to identify like a small route or a couple neighbors they want to go visit um, or being able to uh, let their children even stay home and pass out candy if they're not comfortable going out for trick-or-treating and are old enough or want to stay home with a parent to do that. Um, so really it's just creating um, an opportunity for every child to have fun on Halloween and to be able to do whatever their comfort level allows and for families to have a plan ahead. Very good. Jennifer, thanks so much for being with us. Some great information. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.